What does the property manager typically do? So they begin by managing a property after it has closed. So after you've purchased it and when a management contract's in place. After that, they'll collect rent, manage tenant work orders, contract or subcontract repairs, maintain the property, find, screen, and move in new tenants, uh, as well as the move out activities, and do bookkeeping. There's a whole lot more behind it, but those are the basic things. Why is that important to know? Well, there's a lot of reasons. So they begin. A property manager isn't going to spend a lot of time with you evaluating a property before you purchase it. That's what your realtor is for. Um, they're also not going to typically inspect or pro uh, project repair costs for your property, again, before it's in agreement. You know, a gray area is if you have an established relationship with a property manager, maybe they're renovating or maybe they are not renovating, but they are um managing a lot of properties for you, then they might do a little of uh, giving you an opinion on a property as you're thinking about buying it. Uh, but generally, if it's even if it's a small property or if it's a large property, they're not going to go into helping you evaluate that property for um, purchase. That is your real estate agent is for that. But then also there's a lot of things that you have to do to kind of do your own homework. We'll have a section on that a little bit later. So some gray areas are if you have an established relationship and you're planning to renovate a building, um, if your property manager has a plan will they, where they will do a complete renovation or apartment refreshes for you, they may ballpark some costs or they might even have, you know, kind of a routine that they would go through to update an apartment. Or if you have a large portfolio with them, they may do a bit more based on your relationship. The key area is what kind of relationship do you have? You want to give some thought to what you want and expect from a property manager and then interview to find the right match. Typically, a property manager is going to have parameters on how they plan to run their business. And so, and, and they're not planning really to custom design a plan for you, right? If you have a big portfolio and you want something specific, um, you may find that people cater to you more, you know, kind of are willing to draw up a custom plan for you. Um, however, if it's your first building or first or second building, it's the first time you're having a meeting with a property manager in a certain area, um, it's probably going to be that you're going to interview them to find out how do they typically do their business? How do they typically run their business? What do you expect? What can you expect from them? And then determine if that's something that's going to fit with you. Um, if you want to be involved, as an example, I see this with a lot of new people, they want to be involved in the day-to-day -day decision making um, because they're trying to learn or they're new or they're just not sure about, you know, a new property manager. Um, but your property manager is probably not planning to take on a, an employee or a mentoring relationship with you. So you may want to make another plan other than formal property management if you want to be involved in the, I call it the paper cut level decision making. That is probably not going to feel very successful to you. What you should expect is that they, it, again, everybody's going to have their own way of defining the specifics, but um, they will have a set of services that they typically offer. They will have a routine by which they typically manage, receive work orders, find tenants, screen tenants, and work with their, uh, their owners, or they may call them their investors. Um, and so you want to understand what that is. You could express what it is that you'd like and look for a match. I'm sure that many property managers with, you know, all for good reasons will say, yes, we do those things for you. But if you truly mean that I want you to call me every day or every time somebody makes a work order, I want you to call me before you do anything and you're in a time zone that's completely different or you're in your day job and you're just not available, um, that is probably not their plan because they can't do a good job of taking care of your tenants on the small day-to-day -day things if they don't have your 
uh, trust to be able to do a certain amount of those things with their own freedom and in their own decision-making space. They will typically have a, um, a certain amount of a spend and you should know how much that is. Is it per work order? Is it per tenant? Is it per month on your entire portfolio? Understand that with your property manager. And then within that amount of money, they're gonna hold that back in their account, they're going to move freely to take care of your tenants within whatever that agreement is. Um, and then, you know, what typically, and again, I can't speak for all property managers, and I am not a property manager. Um, I have managed my own property, and now I use property managers to take care of my own property. Um, if something big comes up, like you know, there's an HVAC that's broken and it needs a repair and there's a decision to be made about, do we do a quick inexpensive repair? Is that possible? Or maybe it's more expensive repair or maybe there is an HVAC person who is recommending a replacement. These are where you should expect to receive an email with a summary of what's going on and be asked to make a decision on your behalf. Um, but again, don't assume that that's going to be the case. You want to answer, you want to get these answers from the property manager of your choice, or if you're interviewing property managers, you want to be asking them those questions, give them scenarios, ask them how do they handle it on a particular basis, right? On, on individual situational basis. So what are you going to do when you're buying your first property and you don't have a property manager and you know that they're not going to uh, will look for property with you and you know that they're not going to do a bunch of estimates for you in advance, what do you do? Well, you got to do some of the homework on your own. And if you have a great realtor, they're going to help along with that. But it's not going to be completely without you giving some thought on your side. So Plan to do your own homework on neighborhoods, rental rates, uh, the trends and the attractions in that particular area or in multiple areas if you're just not sure where you're going to buy yet. You want to partner with a realtor who kind of specializes in th these things and ideally someone who is also investing. So they should have some resources for you to use or to lean on their experience. Um, and then you want to determine what's right for you. So are you willing to pay a higher price for a super stable property in a luxury neighborhood that has great tenants who always pay the rent on time and um, they're more financially stable, uh, but that rental, that rental return uh, on your investment is a little bit lower. Um, so just like with stocks, you know, you can buy a very stable kind of a sure thing and a sure thing has a sure return but it's a little bit lower return than if you are taking more risk. So on the other side of that in realtor, in realtor, in real estate, are you a little bit more tolerant of potential vulnerability that might come with a cheaper property? So you might have a higher return, but the possibility of uh, more problems with tenants, maybe delinquencies, maybe a little bit rougher on your apartment. You maybe have to do a little bit more, um, work at the time of turnover, maybe a little bit more active management, um, and maybe a little bit more important to do quality focus on making sure that your tenants are well, uh, well vetted, well, uh, got a great background check and that everything has been checked out, that they are a quality, uh, going to be a responsible tenant. Um, it, it can be one or the other. Those, those two examples are a little bit on the opposite ends of the spectrum and there's everything in between, but I think you get to the picture. So let me know what questions you have. What do you wanna know about picking a property manager or what you can expect for your property manager? Did I, did I forget something? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get you some answers or maybe make you your own video.